There is a test, a quiz. You have to be responsible for knowing all of these URLs. Okay. So clean water team, citizen science, it's something that's going on throughout the United States and there's a need for data and there's a lack of money. So EPA put together a, a really nice little get together this past March. Uh, technology that empowers citizen scientists. They wanna have information so that they can manage the water resources, looking at freshwater biodiversity, but who's gonna do the field work? Volunteers are gonna do the field work. They have this wonderful tool for citizens to use called WQX. How many of you use WQX? And this is a room of professionals and one hand went up, and not mine. <laughs> okay. So the clean water team's been doing citizen science and helping in bioassessment for quite a long time. So I was there, a gentleman from SCORP was there, and we had somebody from San Diego, Coast Keeper. So California was represented with three different programs. Clean Water Team, we're continuing our involvement with this group, helping with a discussion paper and an article, uh, and also at the uh, National Monitoring Conference, uh, we'll be participating in a, in a panel. But it's not just about you know, this neat little technology to grab data. There's a lot more to citizen science, and so that's where the strength of the Clean Water Team comes in. So Continuum is, you know, we need to educate folks. We have events and activities that we can do to acknowledge that we have places where people can get involved and do things. We need to have some tools to support those actions. Then production of data, okay? You do stuff with the data, and there's feedback. And then you can have a stewardship action, all to get to this improved biodiversity. Okay. This is the stuff that EPA is concerned about. But you have to do all this stuff to get there. So Clean Water Team can help with promotion and with support. So we're going to discuss some of that stuff. So what is an event? Okay. Bio Blitz has become really, really, really popular with folks. Professionals go out in the field, man stations, or they go out and do transacts, and they lead volunteers, non-paid folks, to help collect data. Historically, we've had groups go out and do frog watch, where you can listen to frogs and toads, and you can understand who's calling species. Uh, intensity of the calling, okay, how many participants are there? You don't have to count individuals, but just measure intensity. And then when and where they're doing this. And it's been going on for quite a while. Great program. Uh, migration Dragonfly Partnership. Right now we have the migratory flights going on. Citizens are out at the marsh. A lot of bird watchers are participating in this. And they're able to collect information and share it with scientists. It's a great participatory research project. And then grunting greeters, okay? We have fish that like to come up onto the beach. We don't have enough scientists to go out there and collect data, but we have citizens that love to meet the fish. Okay. So there's lots of these programs that the Clean Water Team knows about. People reach out to us to advertise what's going on and do promotion. So within the last uh, Clean Water Team newsletter, uh, Watermarks, we put together this article on BioBlitz. Fast and furious biomonitoring. Fun stuff, engages people, gets a lot of press. Fun stuff. The California Academy of Sciences is, is uh, heavily engaged in this. Another way of encouraging the science, educating people, getting them excited, is to have Shark Week, right? Okay, okay. We don't have sharks. We got crayfish, though, okay? <laughs> so at the conference, I got to meet, you know, one of my partners. It's really hard for me to leave the state, and I'm the, I'm the clean water team. They're, I'm the only person doing what I do in California at my level. So if I leave California, I can meet other people at have a smaller state, and they do stuff, similar stuff. Chris, he runs the stream team in Missouri. His passion, a crawfish. He is a crawfish geek, and it's great to see you know, mug bug mania you know, outside California. So he said, hey, Eric, I want to do a, a, one of your webinars. So a little while ago, he presented a webinar, and we invited folks from the National Monitoring Listserv. It's run by EPA, my Clean Water Team Listserv, and the Listserv for the California Water Quality Monitoring Collaboration Network. 
So we had really good participation, folks that normally wouldn't join a webinar, but they would because they want to learn about this bug at a very non-technical way. We're not you know, going into you know, all the genome and whatever. Just basics. What do they do? How do they function? Why are they valuable? Why are they a pest? Okay. It's his passion. He put together a really nice webinar, and we recorded it, and it's edited, and it's on YouTube now. And so it's a way of, of educating the public and letting them know that, hey, there's this stuff in fresh water, and it's neat, and you can get involved in it at a stewardship side and doing citizen science. And this goes in addition with some of the other tools that SWAMP and the clean water team have already prepared that can help citizen science. So we have the SWAMP tools, you know, stuff that Pete and others have worked on. You know, a lot of folks here in the room, you've, you've worked on these products or you're using these products. Then we have the build modules, you know, distance learning, how to do bioassessment and other water quality monitoring. Doing the uh, invasive species, it's another tool that I put together. We have the Swamp Advisor that helps people do, you know, their QAPPs. And then there's all this neat stuff that's been going on with the clean water team. Okay, we have our guidance compendium, lots and lots of tools, lots of really nice bioassessment stuff for citizens and for educators. Uh, sections 3.5, 4.4, .4, and 4.9, that will be on the quiz. And then we have the clean water team toolbox to help with organization. You cannot just go out there and collect samples. Okay? You have to have programmatic support design to help facilitate science. So we have those tools available, already pre-existed. So helping groups answer questions, helping to facilitate this, this monitoring of freshwater biodiversity. Now some of the tools that uh, like I've shared on the past is our YouTube videos. And I have two different channels, two different programs that I, I work on. We have the Clean Water Team and the California Water Quality Modern Collaboration Network. And because it's me doing both of these, there's a lot of neat overlap. And I can manipulate the playlist to feature stuff from here and here and vice versa. So we do have a playlist on biodiversity and aquatic invasive species. Learn some neat stuff. We do have a uh, show going on in the, in the uh, atrium there, and I'll have another video going on tomorrow. One of the barriers for facilitating citizen science is having your samples shipped and processed by a taxonomist, right? Hazardous shipping, hazardous materials, you have to get certified. That's expensive. Even when we offer a free workshop, they gotta get there. They have to stay there, get their certification. Or you go to a, a certified shipper, you know, that's hundreds of dollars per sample. Well, folks at the uh, Chico Aquatic you know, Bioassessment Lab, they shared with me special provision A180. It's a great way that you can package your samples and ship them without those huge costs and requirements. So we have a video to train those folks. But it's applicable to non-volunteer groups and for the labs to make sure that their clients are shipping them samples that are packaged correctly and you'll have a usable sample. So there's some crossover there. So that's the video I just talked about. But we also have other things in the citizen monitoring wing that help citizen groups uh, and professionals. You know, how to modify your densiometer, how to measure slope with a leveling rod, um, how to recognize basic flow habitats, simple stuff. And we use a lot of recycled content that's been hard for people to find on the internet. Um, Dr. Carr's Freshwater's Flowing, the guide for identification of bankful stage, and stuff that EPA had that uh, if you want it, you have to request a VHS tape. So I got the tapes, we did the conversions, they're on YouTube. Uh, good content that was, that's now accessible to folks. Uh, professional, volunteers, educators, acceptable to everybody, and really, helps empower the citizen groups because they have information now. They don't have to read a ton of books. They can watch a video and be a little more educated. And they're the ones that get to push a lot of policy. So it's really important to educate them. And we you know, have other videos that are up uh, that support you know, bioassessment. Um, you know, 
these are all webinars from the California Water Quality Monitoring Collaboration Network that we've captured and put into Windows Media format and then have on YouTube so that you don't have to just attend the webinar, which is held once a month from about 11.30 to 12, 12.30, you know, once a month. We have this available all the time for you. Okay. And volunteers, they're working. They have real jobs, so they can't watch our, our live webinars, but they can get home, have a meal, relax, get together with the kids and watch a video on, you know, <laughs> all those assessments, right? But we also had some really nice stuff taxonomy, you know. Uh, like last year I mentioned the uh, guidelines for taxonomy determination of, you know, whatever they wanted to talk about. And I'm not going to mention the species because I'm still working on the other video that they, they created for us, uh, chironomids. And I have another one that they're going to do that they haven't agreed upon. I have three or four that they're going to be doing. And they're laughing at me, yeah. But it's capturing their time and archiving it for the future for your benefit. Other things that the Clean Water Team's been doing to help in this area is, is bring attention to various apps. You know, everybody's crazy about what can I do with my mobile device, my cell phone, my tablet, what, what can I do? So in our last newsletter, I, we have a couple pages here of just apps that can be used for citizen science, used for bringing attention to water quality, okay? Information out, information in, different types of tools, okay? It's, it, we have three different apps I'm gonna just briefly mention about. Uh, how to find a citizen monitor. You know, we have a, a web page that's scalable per device, and if you're accessing this tool using a cell phone, it will use the GPS coordination coordinates and ask you, would you like to find the nearest site? And the nearest site would be, you know, who's your closest citizen monitoring organization? So it's been really cool for groups to promote how you can volunteer. Where in this city, where in this portion of, of the state of California can I find a group to volunteer with or collaborate with? And then we have the Creek Watch app, which is great for doing wet dry mapping. A lot of things that you can do with this simple app that's free. And then there's a group in the Bay Area that I've coordinated with, and they're creating an app to capture your water quality data. And it will be CEDIN compatible and WQX compatible to help citizen groups get their water quality data into a form that's usable by everybody. But there's other things that we need to have as well. Uh, we need to have some tools to capture and facilitate science, getting people out into the creek so they can look at it the way scientists would and give them information for stewardship or promote the idea that I can participate in citizen science and in the, the stewardship of my watershed in my community. So we're, I'm looking at the uh, physical habitat survey. You know, it's all visual. That could be a very simple app and it integrates all your scores. So instead of just doing a whole bunch of, of physical measurements and you have like 10 things you measure and you have 10 scores, how do I aggregate those? Well, th this has that aggregation factor. It's simple enough to facilitate, and we can embed videos into this, and it can be made portable, and it's universal throughout California and the rest of the United States. A few years ago, a presentation was made by one of the students, and I think Dan Pickard as well, on the California Digital Reference Collection. Well, I'm making that, or hoping to make that, I'm in the process of, of finding people to help me, make that portable. So if you're not connected to the internet, you still have access to the digital reference collection stream side to help with identifying the bugs or, hey, what's the tolerance value of this critter? That information was captured, it's online, but it's not accessible to everybody. So I'm working to make that accessible to everybody. And then taxonomy, what are these bug parts? We have great pictures, you know, Jim showed the stuff that Pete did. Great, great photographs, but they're kind of uninspiring if you're not already involved. Having a 3D image that you can rotate, flip upside down, spin around, and look at the parts, that's something that's missing. You know, we don't have, you know, three-foot-long bugs. 
but we can make something that is online that gives us something better to teach with. So it's, it's something that maybe a non-scientist doesn't want to get involved in unless it's made easier. So we can make learning some of these uh, taxonomy issues a, a little, little easier to grasp by having the right tools. So we're working on that. So those are three different types of apps that, that are in development. But we also have to have tools in the field. And so if we have all got our little cell phones or our tablets, how do we bring those in the lab together? Okay, microscope, portable microscopes. So uh, within the last month, I bought as many adapters as I could to convert my you know, state-issued mobile device, my iPhone, into a microscope. And so we have devices that clip onto your phone and then you can add a lens. There's a device that actually clips over your lens, a little easier to use. And then we have one that's attached magnetically. And so the one up here, that was attached magnetically. So it's really simple. Uh, that's an, all of these, those are the images of the same bugs. And price-wise, okay, the, the images look pretty good. Price-wise, that was like five bucks, that one was 12, that one was six. Um, that's what I paid, okay? I like to use eBay and whatnot. I've seen the same devices go up to like $50, okay? I did also purchase a mobile digital microscope for like $30, and, I, and I've seen them sold for $250 to $300, the same unit, okay? It's not on the list, it's not up here, because it was not worth Mentioning, yeah. I mentioned it, but it's not being here. Okay. So this one here worked really good for taking pictures of you know a small organism, but getting the whole whole body detail on a large organism. And then this here, you know, your iPhone's 4x, so this gives you um, 10x on top of that and a little bit of a wiggle room. And it's it's a uh, unit wide angle, and then there's a macro lens. This clips over the lens, uh, yeah, so it's okay. There's an adapter you can put on this to stick it onto your microscope. So if you have a portable microscope, you can add that on. Uh, but it's not well made and it kind of falls off. Images though, kind of nice. And this one goes up to I think 100X and you could get uh, uh, 500. This one does 500, but it was lousy. You had to have the image, the organism right here. So its utility in, in helping somebody take a picture of a bug that then they could ask, hey, what was this organism? I, it was neat, but I don't know its name. Or I may have misidentified this. Could you help me out? That was useless. This one, a little, little better. Really nice detail. But the cheapest one, I think it's most utility. So it's taking a look at what's available off the shelf, cheap, so that we can empower citizens to get out there and do something, have some fun, get involved in science, help with the facilitation. So the take home message is I need you to embrace the bug that you love and give me half an hour, okay? You all know, have a favorite bug. I hear you're talking about them all the time. Okay? You have the passion for that organism, okay? Just put together a really short 15, 20 minute slideshow, nice presentation, and we'll do a webinar. Doesn't even have to be live if you're shy like some people. We'll capture it, edit it, get it online to help share your passion with citizen scientists, with volunteers. We need to encourage folks to embrace these organisms in fresh water. And then from there, we can inspire them to get involved with the science and the stewardship. So thank you for your time. I'll be collecting business cards. Questions? <laughs> okay. Hi. Um, do the citizen monitors need to get the scientific collection permits from? If you're doing science, you have to have the collection permits. Remember, if, it, if you're just playing around, it's playing around. But we're doing science, 
we're doing stewardship, but they, citizens can co you know, work under folks that do have the permit. So if you're, you're doing work with a county, an RCD, they can get the permit and make sure that they have the, the identify the correct, uh, was it? Uh, well, uh, it personnel, it, it, they could be an entity, but, but uh, the, um, the uh, principal investigator right, that's part of can be issue. listed uh, under that. So they can, you can do partnerships. The cost is very high, but the benefit in collaboration is volunteer labor is pretty affordable. And we do have a lot of organizations that have those kinds of partnerships. And we do have a lot of citizen groups here. We've got several that have attended uh, the conference this year. Every year we have participation and presentations by citizen monitors. And we will again this year tomorrow. Yeah. Other questions, comments? Everybody wants to go to your party? Well, uh, that's what I want to. Yeah. Um, Thanks. In fact, and you're coming, right? Sure. So, um,